I am Professor Rajavelu uh, from Aragapa University, uh, as professor now. Uh, today I am going to talk about the maritime activities of uh, South India, particularly Tamil Nadu. So, uh, it's a very interesting uh, topic. First of all, I would like to thank Ayan Adhan and Lashmanan uh, for choosing this subject. It's a vast subject, though it is a vast subject, I cannot uh, cover all the things within one and a half hours or two hours. Anyway, I will try to focus some attention on early historic period, that is from 6th century BC to 6th uh, century AD, that is up to the uh, time of the emergence of the Pallavas. Uh, or, uh, I will take some of the issues in Tola period too. Uh, I will quote some mercantile activities in North India too, Sidani and the Nagama and other things. Um, this is a very vast uh, topic. Though the foreigners, our uh, English people, when they came over here, they thought that we don't have any uh, historical records uh, unless we have the Kankanas uh, Rajatani. That is not correct uh, because uh, when uh, Bashim, KL Bashim, you know that he has written a book on the wonder that was India. He has uh, correctly mentioned that the Indians have a separate traditions. They are having history on their own life. Their tradition itself is a life. Uh, their life and their traditions, they preserve the culture and our history too. Uh, it was not recognized by the foreigners, uh, particularly the English people or other European people. They thought that we don't have any historical uh, those material writings like uh, other countries, like European countries. Uh, we don't have any Herodotus or Socrates. Uh, uh, the real history they have written. But we have we, all the people, we, the, the, our history is entirely different from European history because the people preserve it. Everything, uh, we, even still, our uh, temple walls is having a large number of inscriptions. Uh, it revealed the uh, history of our people uh, without any gap uh, from 6th century BC to till day. Up to 18th century, we have the history in the form of uh, inscriptions, in the form of uh, numismatics, in the form of uh, public manuscripts. So we have a large number of sources, but uh, we have to uh, trace out the history, our history from the original sources. So one should know the inscriptional value, then only we have to write a real history and uh, the cogent uh, history of uh, India, especially South India. We have nearly 60,000 inscriptions we have in Tamil itself. So we have nearly 1 lakh inscriptions so far we have discovered in India. So other languages, um, uh, Telugu, Kannada and uh, North Indian languages having nearly 40. So the, one lakh inscriptions we have. So from that we have to trace the history of uh, India. Now the scholars, now uh, many scholars uh, have tried to understand our history from the sources. Like that, our uh, even our trade. So generally we used to say even when we uh, when we have been taught in uh, schools or colleges, the earliest uh, the the first uh, the score of sea route was either Vasco da Gama or Columbus or uh, America was speaking like that. So when we, one, during the time of after the Renaissance period or after the conquest of uh, Constantinople, the Istanbul. So they wanted to find a new route, that is sea route. But before that, they thought that we don't have any uh, sea route at all. But that is not correct. Uh, my opinion is uh, actually the uh, Tamils, the South Indian people, not only Tamils, the South Indian people, uh, consisting of Kerala, 
Tamil Nadu, uh, Andhra, and Karnataka. Uh, they have uh, contact with uh, on the east uh, and as well as the west also through sea routes. So many inscriptions are saying that uh, literature, particularly the Sangam literature, uh, we have a large number of references uh, on trade routes, on traders, on the shipbuilding activities and the various uh, ports on the both sides, on the west and the east. So from there, they went to uh, Alexandria, even beyond that, they crossed even Mediterranean Sea also uh, through sea voyage, through sea. So even many foreign accounts also, like uh, Ptolemy uh, and Pliny, the other sources mention the trade activities of the maritime activities of the South Indian people, particularly the Tamil people. So we have a large number of inscriptions in Mapra that also of our third century BC. From third century BC, we have uh, Tamil inscriptions, Tamil Brahmi inscriptions. We have some mercantile activities, the Nigama. Nigama in uh, even in North India, we have the Nigama, the various kind of Mercantile guilds were there. It is referred to in the even 6th century BC literature in North India, Nigam, the Shreni, and the other uh, group of uh, associations. Really the mercantile uh, group are known as Nigam or Shreni. Uh, Shreni is the, uh, now the present uh, day, they were the set in North India. Here the set is, Shreni set is, they become set is now here. The Nigama is also we have come across in Tamil Nadu in the Brahmi inscriptions, Tamil Brahmi inscriptions, as well as in North Indian inscriptions, also we have the Nigama. Uh, the Nigama, even we have on the pottery also. In the Burmani pottery, we have Nigama. Again, we have in the Mongolian inscriptions the Nigamator, Vellare Nigamator, we have the reference Vellare Nigamator, many uh, inland traders, mentioning of inland traders, like cloth merchants, other cloth merchants. Then Panitha uh, Vanigar, then Pun Vanigar, then Kodu Vanigar, like that. There are a large number of references. After that, also, we have Sangam literature uh, really speaking about uh, our trade activities. When we, uh, we used to uh, say that Yadam Ure Yavaram failure, that Kani and Pungan Rar. We have rightly pointed out in the, uh, the Musri court, we have sung that song, though he belongs to that. Sevanga area, the present Pumunam uh, area, we have identified Pumunam as the original native place of the onion Pumutanar. But he sang about the Musri port. So you, when you uh, reading that uh, poetic poem, you can come across the uh, mentioning of uh, description of the Musri port in that song. Adam Ureyavan Kedir, Tirim Nantum Prakaravara, like that. So he has uh, mentioning the Trade activities of the people at Musri, and the, as mentioned, the Periyar, Periyar in the, the, today's Periyar, that is referred to as Periyar. So the traders came from uh, west, as well as the Tamil merchants went to uh, Red Sea area. We have inscription reference also in the Red Sea area on in the form of uh, portraits. Uh, we have nearly six to seven portraits we have. And the uh, pepper also we record from the excavations at Red Sea area. And some of the ports the Europeans excavated. One is known as Kosiral Kudam, and another one is known as Berinike. And another, another one is on the west side, that is Yaman side, that is Korori. The three sides were more important. Uh, last 20 years back, they excavated in that area. They recovered some portraits with the Tamil legend, Kannan, Patrapuma. And uh, in the Kiran, um, like that, uh, Tathan, along with the even we have one uh, papyrus uh, writings that is from Alexandria. So it mentions the uh, merchant from Musri, he went to uh, Alexandria area and he, he got some loans. For that purpose, he made a document in the form of Greek uh, uh, 
document uh, it was already discussed by greek uh, historians and uh, he, he was the merchant of first or second century AD. he made an agreement in that uh, he has mentioned that uh, various kinds of goods uh, that was uh, went to that area that uh, egypt and other area through evis through sea and the uh, and also land from closer to kudam or berenige and he crossed the land with a camel uh, camels uh, along with goods and he used to have that uh, ferries from uh, nile river and he reached to alexandria and he sold everything and he, he bought some loan for that purpose he made this agreement so it is uh, mentioning about his trade activities and the all goods uh, this uh, really is wonder so the uh, 16th century theory that is uh, the sea route was first discovered by the europeans that is not correct so we have to rewrite our uh, history again because generally our history is based on european uh, thoughts so now we are having large number of source material uh, even in karnataka andhra also we have uh, in the medieval period we have a large number of inscriptions referring about the uh, seafaring activities and uh, many ports with the multiple inscriptions uh, of uh, 13th century it refers to the damage of a ship and uh, uh, the king made provisions for repairing the Uh, ships and other uh, vessels at the andhra coastal area that is multiple inscription uh, even he, he, they levied some taxes um, when the ship was affected he remitted the taxes also so that kind of the abudrika abudrika refuge center it, it became the port become refuge center he declared as a refuge center refuge port so when when they came over they got repaired and again they went to say like that uh, so many inscriptions are that i can mention so many inscriptions so uh, straight away i'll go to uh, i'll slide uh, uh, powerpoint presentation so that you can be able to understand our uh, maritime history of uh, india particularly in south india uh, special reference to tamil nadu because uh, i uh, already mentioned that it is a vast subject so large number of inscriptions are there so many scholars have, uh, have written about uh, the mercantile activities the trade activities particularly uh, by lukarishma in north india also we have many scholars they have written about uh, mercantile merchant guilds uh, in karnataka we have the ayole ayole the, uh, the it was uh, the capital city was ayole uh, they it was started some scholars kavi raman kavi ramesh and other people says that uh, they were the uh, brahmanical community they were known as ayavole but ayavole is a, one of the mercantile activities we are nana desigal nithaya sai with ainutwar and mani gramathar uh, at the same time we have in the eastern side we have uh, the, which is a it served as a silk route uh, when the chinese uh, cross to the western world they have to come over here to come uh, the eastern coast and they Um, it was facilitated with the water and other things and again it reached to uh, western countries so the, this is a silk route the bay of bengal uh, from china to uh, western country it served as a silk route so um, india is a predominantly um, significant uh, uh, trade uh, links with uh, both south and north, west uh, east and west so uh, the proximity the location of our indian subcontinent itself is a very significant one so our people they used to have sail to um, entire world uh, before the uh, discovery of uh, the united states of america because of the, the even the discovery itself is a significant one because of they wanted to uh, see the sea route they wanted to discover the sea route to india unfortunately they went to the western side and they found that uh, united states of america the continent so the, because of indian so india uh, 
the bashim rightly pointed out he is a wonder of uh, uh, entire world india is a wonder uh, continent he has rightly pointed out because uh, they have the traditional and uh, religious and many interesting fact even the natural resources he has quoted uh, they are all uh, amazing uh, for the europeans they, so they wanted to come over here they wanted to conquer Uh, through uh, land route and sea route also um, consequently they are coming over as invaders or visitors from the time of alexander to even from the time of uh, aryans to after that alexander came over and the uh, arab people they came through land route and the many uh, european they came from uh, europe so it is amazing country we have a large number of resources for writing our real history uh, let us uh, see something about our uh, maritime activities in south india so i will go to the uh, powerpoint presentation one by one so we have a large number of references to for our uh, maritime activities both inland and uh, because inland uh, goods uh, went to the ports and uh, from there it went to the other countries so inland route is also very important So we have the mercantile groups known as Nikama, the Nikama and Sreni. Uh, in the medieval period, we have a large number of mercantile groups. They are Tainutvar, Nagarathar, Armani Gramathar, Nana Desi, Ayya Voli, Ayya Polil, uh, like that. Uh, sources, we have particularly the Sangam literature. So Sangam literature is not only... Uh, referring about the day to day life, life of the people of tamil country the, so you know that the agam and puram so the agam and puram is uh, a very important source material uh, we have to trace out the history of our uh, ancient tamil people so number of uh, references are there onnode vandu kariyode vandu many port cities were there um, like porkai uh, tondi musiri very important uh, sea ports in those days and uh, and both on the west and the east um, many ports are were mentioned in the sangam literature and the ships were, were also ships and the various kinds of vessels uh, kalam and padagu uh, kappal thoni uru uh, these are the uh, kinds of uh, transportation of uh, the vehicles that is uh, sailing vehicles red vehicles on the seas so kalam even we have uh, in the even late period also and even the, it mentions the uh, foreign uh, vessels also particularly the chinese vessels um, even we have one inscriptions uh, from nagalapuram uh, it was a prashadevaraya uh, uh, inscription Uh, he mentions many port city ports so he collected uh, revenue from the ports uh, like palaver uh, card and uh, many ports even the, the madrasan patanam the present madras it was known as madrasan patanam in vijayanagara inscription madrasan patanam and uh, on the eastern coast he collected many uh, ayam that is uh, revenue tax from the uh, ships from the ships anchored uh, uh, on the coastal ports so yeah, in the inscriptions we have references of mothers um, and patanam palaver card the puli card present puli card was is known as palaver uh, card in those days then kalingarayan uh, patanam uh, and sadranga patanam and mamalapuram the various ports he has mentioned uh, then uh, the kovalam kovalam also Uh, and also then present kovalam then neelangari neelagangari in patanam like that so in that in that inscription that is 15th century ad inscription that is the 16th century around 1530 ad it refers to the uh, uh, kind of vessels uh, known as uh, the chinese couple known as uh, is a zunk variety the present even still the chinese people using that zunk it's a big ship uh, using for both uh, for uh, goods as well as the for even for the people sailing also uh, 
uh, passenger sail. Also, they use the zunk uh, sail. There is a big vessel. Uh, it is mentioned in that inscription as uh, Tongu Kapal. In that inscription, it is mentioned about Tongu Kapal. Uh, then I found one uh, references from uh, Patinapal, particularly Patinapal refers to about Kavari Pumbatinam. The ancient seaport, you know that, was excavated by Argyle Sir of India and uh, Tamil Nadu State Archive. Also. So, in that, in the Patinapale, very descriptions, uh, fine descriptions are there about our uh, Kavari Pumbatina, particularly Kavari Pumbatinam. Uh, it is a Sangamai uh, port, and the Chinese uh, ship also they anchored there. Uh, in that uh, Patinapale, uh, I accidentally come across that uh, same say, boat, the Chinese boat in that. Uh, it was referred to as. Um, Tongu uh, Nawai. in the Patinapali. So Patinapali, you know that it, it belongs to the second century AD. So Sangam literature, we have a large number of references on uh, maritime activities. Because the Tamil people generally, they were the people, they sailed to east and west uh, through their vessels. They were the people, they were uh, they're capable to do that because they were the accustomed with the seas. So that's why even in the Chola period, the Chola period, there is an epithet of Rajendra Chola, Alagadal Nadivil Palakalam Kandu. So they used to have that. They are having the experience to cross the uh, seas, all the seas. So they went up to South East Asia, they uh, captured Kada, and uh, even they went up even uh, very near to Japan, uh, that is uh, near to the Shanghai, uh, near uh, in China. So we have large number of references even in Tamil inscriptions we have in China also, the late period, because of they are accustomed with the uh, sailing. So that's why the Pandyas, they were uh, they were the people in that inscription, they were uh, referred to in particularly the Bangalore inscription. Uh, they were referred to as Kadal and Vadidi. They, the Kadal, they used to have the Kadal, Kadal and Vadidi, and uh, in the Pulangur inscription, we have Kadalaga Pirandalavan. So, they are uh, ex uh, well experienced with the uh, sailing. So the Sangam literature, we have a large number of uh, references on maritime activities, uh, various goods exported and various goods imported, uh, will uh, take then mile uh, then particularly the pepper. We have the pepper uh, trade a very uh, large quantity we used to into foreign countries. Uh, even the Pliny, the Roman uh, historian, he cautioned the Roman king, don't have trade with uh, Sangam, the Tamil people because our treasury already empty, became empty because of the trade with uh, the Tamilagam, ancient Tamilagam. Consisting of uh, uh, present uh, Kerala, even part of Karnataka, as well as the our entire Tamilagam, ancient Tamilagam, Saraswara Pandya, plus some coarser area also in the northern Mangalore area, Mangalore, the Mangalaburi area, that is Mangalore in those days. So um, he has cautioned they don't have any trade with the people because uh, we are very fond of the pepper. So we um, gave entire gold coins, the, our treasure to the, the maritime activity to the Tamil people. So he, he wanted to stop that. He cautioned the king. So it is there in the Pliny's uh, accounts. Um, um, so um, our people uh, had a very good uh, maritime activities with these, these countries. So that's why even in the Sangam literature, they came along with the gold. So they gave the gold for our pepper and tea and peacock feather and other uh, commodities which was uh, abundantly available in Tamil country. So they were fond of uh, our goods. And for that, they exchanged some goods also from uh, from the foreign country. Uh, they little commodity and they gave little uh, amount also our Tamil people, uh, particularly the wine and other things they uh, imported. Then travelers, of course, we have. Uh, travelers, I have mentioned that uh, the Pliny, very plus of then uh, Ptolemy. Uh, they, they are all giving uh, very good descriptions on our 
ancient seaports, how they voyage, even uh, the, how they use the winds uh, to sailing the um, boats towards west and the east. So uh, the travelers, of course, gave description on uh, the various seaports, the Kumari, uh, Uragabura, then uh, uh, Kabera, the Kaveri Pukunum were referred to as Kabera. So then Uragabura also, the Turayur, the ancient capital city of uh, uh, Cholas, referred to as Uragabura. Then Thundis, Musris, like that. The travelers' accounts is very much uh, um, available for writing our American history of uh, South India. Then archaeological findings. We have some excavated area, uh, both uh, west and east. Particularly in Tamil Nadu, we have a large number of, when compared to Kerala or Western coast. So we did so many, many excavations on the coastal region, particularly the Arikamedu, Pasava Samadram, Mamalaburam, Kavari Pumpatinam, Aragan Kulam, Purkai. And also I made some one excavation at Mandri Pumpatinam, uh, Mandri Patanam, very near to uh, Tanjur, that is. Uh, very near to Madhuram Patanam, Adhiram Patanam. It is a very small uh, seaport. They used to have uh, small trade activities. Uh, we got some Panchimar kind also there. So, but Kaveri Pumatanam and Musri, uh, Musri on the west, uh, it was done by Kerala Archaeology Society. Okay. And that's Syrian. We excavated that area. And he found a, even a boat. They using ferries uh, from the uh, sea to uh, the small boat, a single wood boat. Uh, they record from the excavations. And, and some of the foreign elements also, he got uh, foreign objects. Like Arikamadi recovered some batteries and coins. Um, and we have large number of coins, the Roman coins, particularly we have in Tamil Nadu uh, when compared to North India. Um, uh, on this uh, land routes, particularly the uh, Parani hilly route, that is highway, they used from uh, Kodakanal to Kerala, the Muslim area, then to Korkai, that side, eastern side Korkai. Uh, we have large number of Roman kinds, even we got it from Madurai, then um, um, in the Parani area also we got large number of uh, Roman kinds, gold kinds. Um, that is when compared to North India, it is very large. So like that, um, the numismatic evidence also we have. And also uh, seals and potteries. We have seals, uh, particularly the, we used some seals. Uh, we record from the excavations. Even in the Sangam Vitrach also, it referred to when the goods uh, they wanted to send to abroad, they put some seal, some uh, royal seal on the uh, bundles. So they recovered some uh, taxes also for that. So the seals were also we recovered from the excavations. And potteries, some of the potteries we have uh, the uh, mercantile activities, particularly in Argan Club, we have uh, two potteries with uh, sheep mark and uh, some uh, foreign potteries also, particularly in uh, Arikamedu and uh, Musuri, as well as at uh, Aragon Club, we have foreign potteries. But uh, the uh, Arikamedu, we have the Ampora jars. They used to have the wine. Uh, it has a um, seal on the pottery. It, it, it made from Arizo. That's why it is known as Arizo, Aritain. The Aritain were, we recovered from the um, Arikamed. That was the pottery uh, manufactured at Rome, a place known as Arizo. That's why it is known as Aritain. So the the Terral, Yavana Terral, they used to have that uh, with, uh, with a jar, with a Handle with a jar, handles, a conical jar. We record from the Arikamedu as well as the Musiri and uh, Aragon Club. So, some imitated uh, jar also we, we recovered from some of the excavated area. Uh, it was also from Kanjiburam and also even Thriver card, very near to Chennai. Uh, Thriver card also we have some uh, imitated wine jars like that. So the Aritain, Ampora jars, and particularly the Rowletted uh, ware, we have even in Kiladi also excavations, Rowletted ware. But Kiladi, we don't have any Roman potteries. So far, we don't have any discovery of Roman potteries. But we have the Rowletted ware. The Rowletted ware, uh, in, uh, in those days, we thought that it was a foreign element. It was a foreign manufacture. 
but now it is confined to indian it's indian made but it's a fine variety uh, we have in south india particularly even in amaravathi nagarjunda we have a large number of the rowlet and bar i will show it afterwards then inscribed portraits already i have mentioned that inscribed portraits um, that was the uh, we record from the uh, some of the ports uh, from uh, red sea area uh, um, they are written in tamil brahmi tamil tamil brahmi and tamil language particularly the kosiral kulam you can go to even uh, website you, uh, just to see that kosiral kulam there is a place known as a port known as kosiral kulam in african Let's see the area uh, when Suez uh, Canal was not uh, dug. Uh, the people, our Indians, our particularly the South Indian, particularly Tamil people, uh, went to Red Sea area and they anchored the ships at Kosher Al Kudam. Another port city, another port city is Berenike, B E R E N I K E, Berenike, and another uh, and the another one is Korori. Uh, so in that uh, port they excavated they recovered some portraits uh, inscribed portraits with tamil brahmi and tamil language kannan sadan kotrapuman um, like that so you can uh, go through the website and you can see that also and they recovered nearly 40 kg of uh, pepper in a, in a pot pepper in a pot from it, it went from uh, our tamil country So it shows all the source. Our ancient Tamils have maritime activities uh, from time immemorial, particularly from sixth century BC. But safely, we can say the fifth and sixth century BC itself they started uh, uh, maritime activities on both sides. So the inscribed portions also uh, it gives the clue that our Tamil people went up to that area. Then other objects, the Alexandria, the uh, papyrus uh, manuscript, it refers to about a mis- Musiri. Uh, it is a partly damaged um, but it uh, uh, records all the goods uh, uh, went from uh, tamil country and he, he sold out and he got some loan and for that purpose he made an agreement with the the uh, alexandria merchants then papyrus i mentioned already so this is the um, uh, these are the source material that we have then uh, some of the scholars already they have uh, discussed about all these things our trade activities but we need to ask the foreign notices of south india it's a very good book and he, he has considered on the eastern coast area that is uh, sri vijaya kingdom and chinese conducts and other things he has mentioned and he has asked for notices of south india and he has uh, mentioned even sri vijaya kingdom there is a book on sri vijaya kingdom also and, uh, then kanaga sabai pillai uh, He has written about Tamil 1,800 years ago. These are the references to write about our maritime activities of India. It was uh, uh, they are all for very uh, good reference book. So then Kanaga Sabai, then Shambhalakshmi also trade ideology and organization. Uh, she has mostly concentrated on from she started from Sangam age to even medieval period also she has referred to the Shambhalakshmi trade ideology and organization. then rajan gurukal social formation early south indian book and it's also very good book then karashima and subrail he they collected like they went personally to all the uh, area even they had a project uh, karashima and uh, subrail and shanmugam um, and they had a project and they went to all the countries uh, where uh, where the tamil people um, made their voyages had their significant uh, mercantile like activities in those days they went personally they went there and they explored some of they recovered some even new findings also particularly one perumpadan kal the perumpadan kal uh, is, a, is nothing but a, a gold testing stone so you know that um, generally the gold smith is having when they want to test the gold they have some kind of uh, uh, testing stone so, uh, and the uh, tamil solamna and the gold varasi pakar kal and the, in the on that there is inscription it is referred to perum padan kal even the, the gold smith generally uh, even now they called as patar patar na solvanga tamil la and the padan perum padan kal it is written in tamil language and tamil script 
a tamil script means that is the uh, tamil brahmi script translation period from tamil brahmi to it become some uh, evolution uh, so it, it is written in 4th century ad inscriptions that is 4th century uh, paleographically 4th century ad uh, it is uh, uh, in uh, kolanto museum still it is available in, in a museum uh, they discovered that one they they discovered number of uh, large number of uh, inscriptions merchant guilds inscriptions of medieval period in sri lanka and uh, south east asian countries it's a very good book they written a good book uh, ancient and medieval commercial activities in the indian version uh, um, they even they have uh, as appendix they gave uh, nearly 250 inscriptions uh, related to merchant guilds um, uh, like nana desi desi taini tugal then uh, mani gramathar then uh, they had a separate uh, military wing for the production for production they have a uh, separate military wing virakodiyar um, they were known as virakodiyar so all the inscription they have uh, published in that in, as appendix in the in the book they is a very good book uh, they had a project along with a team of people many scholars were there in that group so they had a tremendous work on medieval commercial activities of south india they have taken all the uh, south indian uh, inscriptions in that in particular karnataka karnataka and andhra also simultaneously they were also very busy in their uh, trade activities that's why we have uh, uh, inscriptions that inscription the script uh, went through the merchants only to south east asia at the present uh, script number large number of uh, scripts they are using in south east asia this there were the uh, original script of our uh, south indian people till they are using for the script as script this evolved from south india one like uh, our uh, pallava grantha and uh, our telugu and kannada it, it looks like our uh, south indian scripts of uh, early uh, medieval period then we have sangam literature already i mentioned that pombugar kokai musri stondi and mandai arikamedu alagan kulam so but at the same time the literature is mentioning about large number of uh, seaports uh, so some scholars thought that uh, the tamil people uh, the tamil country because tamil country is uh, generally is, uh, separately identical we, we don't mingle with uh, north indian people because our geographical uh, position and geographical conditions are like that uh, even asoka the he, he, he extended his empire up to uh, present uh, uh, palichistan area uh, that is very near to sabaskar ki that was a palichistan area and north western area the ancient marada uh, country extended uh, up to palichistan and uh, to south it was uh, nandra that maski was the southern boundary of asoka empire he did not conquer asoka himself mentioned that uh, i have not conquered that uh, my neighboring countries are uh, my neighboring states are uh, uh, the states uh, uh, dynasties are the chodas pandyas the satya putras and pulindas and kerala putras kerala putras nothing but charas and satya putras is adiyaman identified with adiyaman uh, adiyaman of tagadur and the pandyas and the chodas we know the cholas and pandyas they were the independent countries he, he, he did not conquer so he has mentioned his uh, rocket 13 uh, he has mentioned along with the foreign kings like antiochus antigonus and uh, uh, maka philips and other kings so that's why our tamil uh, people the tamil country is separately uh, culturally and uh, socially they were separated from north india because there is no uh, the brahmanical cult or the vedic cult or the brahmanical uh, form of uh, society we don't have the tamil people they are having the tenais the five tenais they are uh, ruled independently without any uh, disturbance of north indian invaders uh, uh, till even up to 18th century we don't have that because of that only we don't have the north indian means much but they have uh, maritime they have traders uh, the traders came over here the nigamas many nigamas the mercantile merchant people they came over here 
That's why even Sangam Vitras mentioned that um, um, many northern cities, Magadathil um, and Purukal, Matra Purukal, Patriyalam, Suli Gradi, Sangam Vitras, Vangalathil and Purukal, Magadathil and Purukal, Patriyalam, Purukal, Sangam Vitras, Suli Gradi. So the traders came over here, but the, we don't have any direct rule of North Indian, particularly the Mauryan. Or in empire, you know that he conquered entire uh, India except Tamil Nadu. So he, he did not conquer. But at the same time, um, uh, our people, our uh, the Tamil people, Tamil kings uh, the, uh, dynasties, they helped uh, to the military activities. They even uh, it, only the literature mentioning about uh, Mauryas uh, we have in Tamil literature only. We don't have any North Indian literature mentioning about uh, uh, Mauryas. Uh, we, we are depend on only the inscriptions and other uh, Buddhist Chandra stories and other things. Uh, Tamil uh, literature mentioning about even Nandas. The Nandas uh, they hidden the gold treasure in the uh, and the uh, Ganges. Only Pudai to it, the Gangai Karayal only, very Pudayal Pudai to it, Nandaral, very Pudayal. Uh, it is quoted by a lady in the Sangam literature. Lady is called Alukanam historical knowledge in the Sangam literature. Then we have the Vamba Mauryas. The Mauryas, how they came over to through their chariot. They refer to about chariot of Mauryas, the Kosar Galpati. So the Mauryas, about the Mauryas, they knew the people. Even we have some North Indian, North and Black Polish were. In Korke also and also Arun Club. That is NBP, where Northern Black Polish Ware is very much available during the time of Mauryas. It's referred to as Mauryan Ware or Northern Black Polish Ware. So we recovered from Korke excavation as well as in Aragon Club excavation also. One piece, I think, they recovered from Kiladi also now. So the trader came over here, but not by the kings or any empire or any dynasties. They came and conquered Tamil Nadu. That's why the, it has a separate identity. The Tamil people have a separate identity till they preserve that. Then we have trade goods that import Roman wine, gold, pottery, silk, everything I said. Then export pepper, tusk, cloth, peacock feather, Gangetic nod, that Ganga Inudia, Irvar nod. Other than that, uh, contact they in, through inland, even north, uh, uh, they, it came to the south. And it went to foreign countries. Then various vessels. So I mentioned that various vessels, Navai, Vangam, Ambi, Andaso, Toni, Padagu, uh, Uru, uh, particularly the Tungu, the foreign ships, the, the Zunk uh, variety of ship. Still they are using the still the Chinese using the Zunk variety. It's very uh, uh, big vessels. Then Paditripath mentions about the sailing of ship. Then Kalangare Vilakam. About Kalangare Vilakam, we are references in Sangam literature. Um, then uh, Yavana, that uh, settlement of Yavanas, even uh, the Otenapale and other uh, literature uh, referred to the settlement of Yavanas. They, when they were, uh, they were, we gave the employment to them in those. Now we, our people going abroad for their employment. But in those days, we gave employment to them. They were served as the uh, coastal guards. They, they were appointed as coastal guards, employed as coastal guards. They were watching uh, the coastal region in the night. Even we have a settlement of uh, Evanas, the Kaveri Pumbatinam. Uh, they used to have uh, various uh, amusements and other things also in refer to in the Namitese, particularly Patinapali, Evana Kudiri. So we excavated one area, particularly one area. Uh, our, uh, Okay, they were Raman estimated place uh, known as Vellai and Irupu. So Vellai, you know that Vellai is referred to generally, uh, we used to call them Vellai Karagal. Many partners, we used to call them Vellai Karagal. A place known as, very near to Kaveri Pondu, there is a place known as Vellai and Irupu. Uh, they, uh, they excavated, they recovered a Roman coin also in that, in that place. Um, the Vellai, the Roman settlement, the Roman uh, particularly is not only the Rome people, the entire European people, they were known as the Roman, uh, the um, uh, Yavanar in uh, Tamil. Yavanar means any, any new people. Yavanar means Pudiyadu. 
in tamil which is referred to as pudiyadu yanar means any western people so yavanar not only the rome other people also were near to in the suburb um, of in the vicinity of rome country they also used to come over here as traders and they were, they were settled here some for some time they were um, they were they got some employment also here uh, like that our prosperity our trade prosperity were very much referred to in the sangam literature and as well as archaeological findings a large number of uh, references we have to reconstruct our uh, so this is the paditru patu i have mentioned that ponnodu vandu kariyodu payandu then um, even in that there are some uh, um, yeah, in that uh, uh, our yadumure yavan kel in that that musri is mentioned then how the, the small boat uh, they used for uh, goods even he has mentioned uh, the goods how commodities are uh, kept in the musri port like huge mountain like that he has uh, the mamulan are mentioned about this நிறைய ஒரு பெரிய மலை போன்று அந்த நிறைய இதெல்லாம் பொருள்கள்லாம் கொட்டி வைக்கப்பட்டிருந்தது ஏன்னா சம் கான்ஃபிளிக் பிட்வீன் தி ஃபாரினர்ஸ் அண்ட் த தமிழ் மெர்ச்சன்ஸ் இன் தட் முஸ்லீ ஏரியா தட்ஸ் வை இ சேட் தட் யாதும் ஊரே யாவரும் கேளு இதெல்லாம் நீங்க வந்து சண்டை போடக்கூடாது எல்லா ஊரும் நமக்கு உண்டு தான் எல்லா பிகாஸ் மெனி பீப்புள் கேம் ஓவர் தர் அண்ட் தே ஹேட் சம் மெர்ச்சன்ட் ஆக்டிவிட்டிஸ் மெர்கண்டல் ஆக்டிவிட்டிஸ் திஸ் இஸ் தி ஃபாரின் அக்கௌண்ட்ஸ் So, Herodotus, Megasthenes, Strapo, Pliny, Ptolemy, Periplus. These are all the reference books. You can uh, see these also. Megasthenes. What uh, again? Hello? Uh, this is the Herodotus and uh, Megasthenes, Strapo, Pliny, Ptolemy, Periplus of Erythrency. The Periplus of Erythrency, there, we don't have uh, that author of the Periplus of Erythrency. But that was a very uh, useful book. Uh, refer to about our uh, ancient ports and uh, sailing hey, of the uh, routes and everything then atrian helian cosmos indigo mm. plusters these are the foreign accounts we have the uh, uh, these are the very important source material foreign accounts uh, mm. to uh, know about our uh, maritime activities then erodotus then magazine strap of geography that geography how they sailed then uh, uh, the route and other things also they mentioned strapo then agassus tiberius around Ty- uh, agassus period we have agassus coins also in tamil country so they recovered some some of the coins of agassus uh, second century even the tamil people also they minted coins uh, on par with the uh, roman coins uh, similar to roman coins some the bust of king is there generally in the roman coins our tamil people also that makode Makode, we have Makode kind with a bust of a king and one man is standing another kind of Kutuan uh, Kodai uh, like that. We have a large number of kinds also Tamil people. So that's why we, we have state formation. That's why I said that our uh, Tamil people, they, some scholars said that uh, they, they were all tribal community or tribal people, a tribal society. Even the Marx oriented scholars, they do not know our proper literature, literary evidences. Uh, most of them from other uh, states or other countries uh, they said that they were the tribal society we have tribal society not like that because uh, we, uh, our tamil people they are on par with the um, uh, empire uh, they are having their own identity they are say, issuing coins so when they control the maritime activities or control the um, trade so automatically some uh, state will be there so state only will control state only will issue the coins so we have a large number of uh, uh, sangam age coins pandya coins chola coins chera coins we have so that's why they had a separate um, uh, empire status or a state status not uh, we are not having any uh, uh, tribal society or tribal state so so they enjoyed like a state because they issued coins they controlled because but that's why we are having both the port, port city as well as the capital city capital city generally inside the country the port city on the coastal region they control the uh, port cities uh, for uh, controlling the maritime activities for trade and they appointed the princes as their uh, uh, commander in chief or the leader of that port 
that's why chara is having the musri and their capital city was karur vanji chola is having the urayur and their capital city the port city was kaveri kumbatinam and pandyas they are having they were the people they continuously they ruled the country no indian kings no indian dynasty they are having continuous history except the pandyas up to 18th century we are the pandyan provinces they went to so they shifted their capital from um, the tirunelveli pandyas from madurai to tirunelveli like that but they continuously we have the uh, source material for pandyan kings they were the earliest dynasty in india one of the earliest dynasty in india um, uh, they ruled up to 18th century to 19th century also we have so that's why they controlled the korkai korkai was the capital city of the pandyas their capital city was madurai so that's why they appointed the princes to control the maritime market like the maritime activities so they enjoyed a lot and the even the foreign influences were their foreign foreign money they came from um, with gold uh, that's why um, when compared to north india large number of gold coins we are come across in kerala and uh, tamil nadu as well as in karnataka region and andhra also we have um, the roman coins large number of uh, uh, the treasure trove we got it from treasure trove large number of gold coins so uh, augustus at uh, the second century ad seven uh, up to fourth century ad we have the uh, gold coins of the roman countries and pliny the latin naturalist he has mentioned pliny i mentioned about uh, our uh, coastal region and the sea voyages and other things also magasinis as the magasinis of indiga it is particular than i the part ku open panni vechirken enoda da connect pannirukke adha connect panna modha adu theeru yeah idu theeka vendama enoda da onoda appo night ku thevai padumla thaniya aama excuse me Hello. please mute yourself session is going on no uh the pliny uh, as uh, uh, to the national history first century AD, that is work that magasinis indiga so it is about the mauryan empire and other things and they also mentioning about the south indian trade contacts also they mentioned about the, the particularly the madurai and other things magasinis we have references on pearl uh, fishery activities also and ipalas the wind it is known as ipalas the musris and it is how the people tamil people Uh, used to have the wind formations how to utilize the wind formation for their uh, sailing towards the west and uh, when they are coming over, they they will go some particular time and when they are coming over some they use some wind they used wind uh, for that uh, sailing and ptolemy geography that latitude longitude also these are the very important uh, uh, ptolemy activities latitude longitude he has mentioned some port also and uh, then position of uh, ports and other things also even then beriplus of erythrici is anonymous author uh, is a real good of for the traders travel once only once but recorded in my so it, it includes this sri lanka also when they are mentioning about um, tamil nadu tamilagam ancient tamilagam some many the wall foreign uh, accounts mentioning about our sri lanka also sri lanka traders we have some uh, coordination with them also the natrian written uh, as per magasinis account this later editions and then early in second century that cosmos this middle of 6th century ad we have then we have already i mentioned pliny the uh, uh, the pliny the elder cautioned the roman that's why it said that pliny cautioned the roman senate that they should not should stop to make trade with india for pepper and other spices because the gajana uh, uh, the treasury became uh, empty because of the trade with the tamil people the spices that really they, they very much fond of uh, spices even they used to have uh, for preserving uh, the mummies also they, they used the pepper so for that purpose they 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 want pepper in large quantity it was very much available in our uh, that uh, in our hilly area particularly in kerala and the palani region in kodaikanal also that tandikudi we excavated uh, we have a uh, large number of uh, even still they is um, they are planting that um, the settlement were there around even second century uh, nearly 1000 3000 years back that 1000 bc we have that tandikudi excavation it was ruled over by one tandikoma 
Chandikudi above the Kodakangal area. So this this were the area they produced large number of uh, these uh, uh, spices. So it went from uh, uh, parts of uh, uh, Pani area. So we have large number of Roman kinds also we have found. There's some area. Some even we have some highways also. But still the Palakkad area that uh, highways, still now it is highways. Uh, the, that was the ancient route, uh, another uh, ancient route to uh, Kerala. Uh, it was known as uh, Rajagai Sri Pirvali during the time of Rajaraja. There was an inscription at Sundakai Muthur. It is known as uh, Rajagai Sri Pirvali. So in the present, most of the highways, in those days, it was uh, used by the, our people, our ancestors. There is a, uh, another highway known as Adiman Pirvali. So now it runs from Coimbatore to Bangalore, the national highways. That was known as in those days, uh, Adiman Pirvali. Even they installed even a milestone also, the kilometer stones. Now we used to have that. But in those days also, Tamil people very much uh, um, accustomed with that, the milestones, every uh, Kadam, they used Kadam. So Adiman Pirvali, Kadam Irvati, Adiman Pirvali, Kadam Irvati, like that. So they were very much uh, enjoyed their life in, the, in those days with their natural resources. Though, so he mentioned that. So don't have any uh, trade with these people because our gajana will be empty, our treasure will be empty. So you become one day bankrupt. Like that he has uh, cautioned the king. So uh, this is the uh, coin they gave. For that purpose, they borrowed the, this pepper. And uh, uh, this is uh, that Roman Empire. The big ships um, sailed to these ports of trade because of the volume and weight of pepper and malapotram. These are the references. On, um, this is the, um, uh, actually, this is from um, that uh, Alexandria. Uh, papyrus, papyrus, it mentions, uh, it is written in uh, Greek, ships in those ports of trade carry full loads because of the volume and quantity of pepper and malapatram. So these are the goods they sent to foreign countries, the Roman countries. Uh, these are the, some of the uh, references in the ship, how the ship went and other things. Uh, this is the route, uh, this is the uh, Red Sea area. So these are the Berenige and uh, Kosiral Kodam. I mentioned two Port cities on the um, eastern uh, um, side of uh, North America, North Africa, very near to Red Sea area. This side, one uh, Korori, one Korori is also, Yemen side, one Korori port also uh, is there. In that, uh, we have that uh, Indai Kiran, one um, Tamil pottery we have. So, this is the route they went through up to um, that area, the Arabian Sea, and they went to these countries and they reach Mediterranean. Uh, uh, they use some land route also from Berenige or Kosigal Guda. They, they sailed uh, from Niles. You know that Nile uh, flows from south to north. Uh, it confines at Mediterranean Sea. That was a, it looks like a wash only, the Nile still. So they use big vessels for the transportation of uh, goods. The Pliny, Pliny also mentioned about our Indian oceans and our goods uh, uh, and other things, our uh, um, ports and uh, everything, Mithris. The Sangam literature. Sangam literature, I have mentioned that. Uh, you know that, that Kutu and Kodai. So, uh, even the Dakats were there in those days in the Arabian Sea. Uh, they, because of uh, the traders, they came to Sarah King and they. Uh, said uh, we are affected by the sea pirates. So that's why we, we, want, uh, we want some support from you like that. So you know that the Kadal Peraguti is Sengu He was uh, called as Kadal Peraguti Sengu He destroyed the entire uh, sea pirates and he gave facilitated the, uh, to the sailors, to the traders uh, for smooth trading uh, to those countries. So, Kadal Piraguti, a whale Sengutu. That's why even uh, some traditions are there. Even our Murugan, Sengutu Vela. So, he, he was a, a, a god of ocean in those days. After that, became only he became Kurindi Kadavul. Even still, we have some practice. That's why I said that our tradition still are keeping our history. 
so if, if you go for that trichandur uh, uh, these are the things uh, I, i i don't want to say something already mentioned in our textbook and other things these are the new things so we are talking so that's why the archaeologist and uh, so there is a difference between archaeologist and uh, historian so historian generally they will take uh, the books and other things to uh, carry out their uh, things to people but our uh, archaeologist discovery is more important so discovery so is so coming day by day and it will reconstruct our history and new things will come up so these are the things uh, so we have to think uh, about all these things young generations uh, now they are very much interested in archaeological findings and archaeological excavations and very much interested to read uh, inscriptions the inscriptions are giving uh, vivid picture on our real history because they were the contemporary evidences so sometimes literature also sometimes fail to give some uh, coherent history or uh, more exaggerations will be there but in the inscriptions we cannot uh, say like that inscriptions are the contemporary materials the whatever it occurs it is mentioned in the inscriptions uh, in the form of it is not only religious oriented uh, they gave a vivid picture on uh, local history or uh, the state formation or state history or things conquest 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 everything they traded everything the social history everything they it will give so um, in the sangam literature we have the the destruction of the sea pirates like the kadambas that's why the well generally the hero will become later on god or goddesses in the operas till day we are uh, custom with that some, some of the heroes now they be, now they, they become god for the people like that our sengot to valan till the, there is a festival in the Uh, trichandur area surabatman uh, surabatman so he is not only he is a god of the hill kurinji kadavul but also in the coastal so uh, i discovered one uh, temple at uh, mamalapuram that is sangam age uh, murugan temple so he is very much associated with the uh, people of uh, the pardavas the fishermen community so he is a warrior so that's why he is having a uh, channa veera he is having two belts he is a, he is a um he is a uh, tribal god our hindugan uh, so sengotu velan so sengotu in the seran sengotu one he destroyed entire uh, the sea pirates they uh, placed in the goa region that is kadamba 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 region the kadamba the, that's why he is referred to as kanda kadamba so he destroyed entire kadamba sengotu velan then urai thirai parappin padugalal oti velpugal kutuvan padithu patu So the Kutuvan, so he destroyed the entire uh, that uh, sea pirates, and uh, paved the way for the smooth uh, trading with the uh, Tamil people or Tamil Indians and Tamil traders. So they went uh, peacefully to the uh, foreign countries, particularly the Roman countries. So they were the people, the Kadambas. You know that Kadamba people they ruled over the area. They were the sea pirates sometimes. So he, uh, he destroyed the entire. padugadal oti velpugal kutuvan it is referred to in the paditru patru so this is these are the things uh, we have in the sangam literature sangam literature gave lot of references if i take that it will take another two hours so just like uh, saying something then ipalas charted out seasonally monsoon winds they used uh, 12 degree latitude like that so this is ancient uh, uh, charted uh, the ipalas uh, wind activities of the Uh, smooth sailing the strapo i mentioned that al- already then plini also he has mentioned uh, so many things so i will pass on to next then musri so musri we have this is a very big uh, so when compared to other port city musri is uh, actually uh, very busy port in those days uh, some of the ports we have on the western coast that are, that, that is used uh, used by the westerners as well as the our tamil people also they use musli then pilini also he has mentioned so this is the time they used to sail from july 20th it, they came they, they started from the red sea area then uh, they reached here september july august september then three months they used to come to india so from june 
to September. Three months they used to have. This is the place they anchored their ships and they went through land uh, by camel, uh, camel, and uh, the Nile River also. So these are the Berenike and the Kosil Kuda and another uh, quarry in Yemen, very near to in Yemen country now. So they cross even Mediterranean Sea and uh, our goods. That's why the, uh, the European, why they wanted to um, uh, find the sea route? Because India prospered. So when um, uh, Constantinople, uh, around 15th century, the 1448, it, uh, it, it is happened. So Constantinople uh, conquered by Turkey. So they stopped the entire trade uh, with India. That's why they wanted to do all Portuguese and uh, Spanish and uh, French and English people. They wanted to do. They gave liberal uh, uh, concession to the sailors uh, to see the new route to India. So that's why our India is having more prosperity yeah, till uh, 16th century. That's why they, uh, from the time of uh, Aryans, they came because of our natural resources. And after that, the, the Alexander, then again the Arabs, then again the all European countries in the 16th century. Because we have a large number of natural resources, they lived a very prosperous and peaceful life. So they liked that. That's why they wanted to see sea route, a new sea route to India. This is the area that you see that Berenike and the Kosiril, these are the Berenike, I see port in those days. So they excavated this area and got some uh, Tamil in, uh, reference sources in the form of pottery. So this are they will go from then December to January, they will create. This is the papyrus of Alexandra papyrus, uh, uh, it's written in. Greek uh, uh, script and language. It refers to about the merchant of uh, Musiri. Uh, this is uh, mostly damaged one. Uh, probably the uh, Musiri trade uh, uh, signed in uh, Tamil language only and Tamil script only. It is not available. But he made some agreement with the uh, with his loan vendor. Uh, so he got loan uh, for the purpose of for. Uh, for his trade purpose, and he promised that I will give after my all the goods I, I will sold the year, and I will give partly uh, and uh, some time afterwards like that. This is the loan agreement of first century AD. It's very interesting. So many goods uh, it mentions. I will show that also. This is a paper, the paper uh, in written in that script. This is Musri's paper. It is also known as Vienna Papyrus, discovered in 1985, blanks first, second century CE. It is a portion of a maritime loan because it's a uh, destroyed one, it's a spoiled one, because the papyrus uh, almost uh, collapsed. Some of the portions are, are there. Uh, loan agreement between a trader of Musri and loan lender of Mayos, uh, Mayos Armos. Uh, that is a place I mentioned, uh, I, show, I have shown in the map also Mayos Armos. Then the records the shipment of goods from Musiris, undertaking transport the merchant Magatis from Musiri and unloaded Kozir al Kudam. Kozir al Kudam or Brinige. These are the two ports on the uh, eastern uh, side of the uh, uh, North America, North Africa, very near to Red Sea area. Uh, so this is Kozir al Kudam. You can go to even website also, go Kozir al Kudam and Brinige. So we have uh, Tamil pottery, Tamil uh, Brahmi pottery having. Name of the Tamil merchants, uh, Kosil Kudam and Benike. So from the ports, they cross the sand desert. So it mentions how he crossed the, uh, how he reached the Mediterranean Sea. So he crossed the sand route, because you know that's a desert, it was a desert area, through camels, reach Kabodas. Kabodas is nothing but it's on the, it's a port uh, in the, you know, Nile is a, like a sea. So the, the port is known as Kabodas. Various kabotas were there, that is port. So he even he levied some taxes for that, that uh, toll tax. He gave some toll tax. Even in that, uh, it mentions he gave some toll tax uh, to enter the uh, the most of the ports in the Nile area, kabotas, in case ships, wherever, then he encased ships uh, 
to sail reached alexandria so in those days alexandria was the uh, uh, world market so you, you see that our economy in those days when compared to now usa is now we are saying always you see africa you see america or you see japan but in those days they are saying that you see india because we control the entire economy of, of the world in those days so that's why the most of the europeans came over here and they conquered and we became slave to them so we did not know our prosperity we did not know our history properly still so we should understand that we are having proper history proper source material we are not utilizing that that is the main thing then that was a alexandria world market then that uh, he he sold out everything and he, he got the loan again to make a, a new venture new um, uh, trade this is the musri document he has mentioned uh, many things so uh, now the goods whatever they he took uh, to that country and now the at present when compared to uh, now uh, we have to load in two ships it is there the quantity i will show that it is really historic washing that is this bernige i will show the bernige or the it, it this is the route you see that this is musuri he started from musuri and he asserted that sobata uh, uh, and also the nojan then bernige coastal kudam then he went to alexandria this is the route coastal kudam uh, these are the routes this is the red sea area bernige and uh, this is the bernige this is the bernige excavated in uh, area european archaeologist so we have uh, double grabi sathan indikiran sathan we have uh, nandikiran we have berinige area uh, developed by ptolemy 25 uh, the uh, persons we see uh, we have the sathan kannan kanan that is kanan sathan kotrapuman we have three then pepper uh, with a, in a part 7.55 kg they recovered from the excavations it went from musri this is the kotrapu man in tamil legend tamil script so finally we have the end na is there so this is a tamil brahmi inscription tamil script kotrapu man and satan satan means sat sat means merchants sat madurai so now we are having sat madurai some place names we have satan sitalai satara satan means sitalai satara then perinjatan even that even silapadigaran is mentioned and satan yeah so tasan means that was the they were the uh, mercantile people merchant people sadan this is kanan kannan a uh, tamil name kannan this is the uh, 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 yaman area korori this is a mound on the coastal region this coastal area it was excavated here also we have patapon uh, sadan this are the pottery this pliny says pliny what he said uh, the tamil nadu are under million sisters that mentioned the uh, distance and uh, the gold everything in caution i already mentioned uh, these are the loan agreement this is the alexandria uh, loan agreement agreement signed at musri they signed at musri probably hypothecating the ship they are hypothecated one uh, document that one it is a two separate agreements one to a merchant another to the money lender security have been given to cargo not to ship only the goods have been uh, uh, what uh, insured like that uh, given to cargo not to ship the trade is highly sophisticated around first century itself overseas transaction ship name is given thermopolan the ship is referred to as thermopolan in that uh, uh, alexandria document the ship is known as thermopolan is mentioned the cargo items what are the items it sent to uh, uh, that country the black pepper value is 20500 talents that is 95 roman pounds total 625 tons total pepper 544 tons and gangetic nod 81 tons from the total value of the goods from tamil nadu port we can purchase a fertile farm land of 2400 acres in egypt egypt is a big uh, very fertile region 
now if you want to purchase that uh, land uh, the total amount of goods the selling of goods is equal to 2400 acres we can purchase in that so you see how much quantity how much goods they sent to uh, roman country the total of the value of the uh, fourth uh, third of the goods which came with the ship thermopylae in silver 1154 talents and 2852 dirhams from there it came silver and other things then we have uh, roman and uh, greek coins al pollachi karur velalur uh, kaliya muthur madurai pollachi kodamangal these are the root in, it is started from al to pollachi karur velalur uh, kaliya muthur we have roman coins kaliya muthur a big hoard uh, roman hoard we have uh, velalur also we have roman coins record uh, karur also we have large number of roman uh, antiquities roman coins also madurai we got roman coins pollachi kodumanal kodumanal we have uh, pachuma coin and also roman coins so, uh, you know not kodumanal is very the trade center kodumanam payanda arumani muttam so when uh, the kodumanal is a manufacturing center kodumanal and as well as kiladi uh, were the manufacturing center of uh, many semi precious stone uh, they were very much eager to purchase it the romans they were very much eager to purchase it pearl and semi precious stones and other things then vallu valli panam gaadu kota kota enda naadu then pudancheri these are in kerala then aragan kulam from kiladi it went to aragan kulam uh, the goods they were the factory area kiladi is not a settlement area uh, there was a factory area adjacent to madurai uh, in india totally 130 sites have yielded roman coins majority of them largest in tamil nadu and kerala kongu region only Uh, typology velalur this is these are the kinds you can come across in some of the books also velalur agastya sand you know tabish and karur also we have agastya kalyamuthur and madurai we have so many have been destroyed by the uh, uh, discoverer so the local people generally recovered gold kind they immediately they uh, uh, they minted that and they made it as ornaments so many we have missed it. so the, so far we have recovered some of the gold kinds now it is preserved so large number of uh, gold coins have been already destroyed uh, they made of uh, ornaments these are the coins they are gold coins that's why kerala is very prosperous still the uh, temple of padmanabha uh, is having large number of treasure uh, uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the custody still one room would be opened these are the coins they gave coins ponnodu vande kariyodu payandu these are the coins now oh, i can go to the archaeological findings excavation sarike medu we have already i have mentioned sarike medu pumgar alpura korkai patanam inland inland we have some cities because manufacturing area we have kodumanal karur vasasam these were excavated by various agencies like arkel sir of india state archaeology as well as uh, university universities also vasasamudram foreign berinike foreign countries berini kosalil kudam porori and yaman already i have mentioned all these things this is the uh, important ports arikamedu pumugar some of the uh, uh, ports are there i have not mentioned aragankulam porkai the nelsinda that is patinam musiris uh, patinam it is referred to patinam how it is present patinam Uh, tondi and uh, naitra uh, these are the references in the sangam literature this is arike made excavations uh, made by excavated by the famous uh, our uh, martimer wheeler 1941 to 44 he made excavations here and he excavated from uh, that uh, indus valley also so if you see some film of kamalasan this is sriram heram i think so kamalasan also one of the archaeologists that and another uh, hindi man hindi hero also uh, archaeologist they they served with him only that was in the film so he excavated that uh, scientific first uh, scientific excavations done by uh, martin regular at arikemedu so very huge excavations like our kiladi in those days uh, he made some excavations he recovered some uh, similar to our kiladi excavations the same bricks same uh, um, size of bricks and they recovered Uh, amphora jars that is rom made from rom that wine jars 
the naritan a particular kind of pottery uh, made at arizo a place known as arizo in italy uh, aritain and the people settled here that arikamedi is very near to pondicherry in near, uh, that uh, very near to the on uh, river ariyangupam river this is ariyangupam river so these are these are the foreign potteries that aritain uh, this made uh, eastern siglia then cup and uh, this the, this is the rounded ware the uh, rounded round shape uh, say decorated this is ampora jars these jars were uh, me, uh, for uh, wine purpose uh, the yavana teral yavana teral they purchase our people generally they are having uh, from aryans times also pama banam suraban like that they are fond of that our people so uh, now also they are very fond <laughs> so these are the wine uh, jars the italian people they came over with this this is the wine uh, a, a fragment of a wine jar the bottom portion of the wine ampora ampora jars this is a hand hand of the ampora yeah all are broken because of uh, these are the semi precious stone they are made from india they were very much interested to purchase this our european people they wanted this so uh, uh, that's a koduman is famous kodumanam payanda arumani muttam um, even they purchased the raw material from afghanistan our uh, the carnelian is a kind of uh, uh, bead uh, the raw material they purchased from afghanistan they manufactured here still the people some people are working still some manikarkal shops are there kongu region so semi precious stone Uh, carnelian beads and it went to through uh, sea so that's why kodumanam uh, payanda arumani muttam these are the uh, things recorded from arikamedu but arikamedu also in and around pandicherry also we have some uh, manufacturing area when there is a place known as manikolai there we have the raw material many semi precious stone factories were there in those days around sangam period that is uh, these, these are all first century ad second century ad then we have even sri lanka people also involved in trade they came to our coastal region in kaveri putnam we got some lady named bavata abimagata so uh, even in uh, arikamedu also we have the influence of north indian as well as sri lanka traders uh, along with the roman traders this is the seal you see the uh, seal of uh, in, on the pottery some uh, figures are there this is rounded ware indigenous these are the uh, some of the antiquities we recovered from arikamedu these are the uh, script the tamil people uh, they used their names on the pottery like satan uh, then adan kannan like that with the name, father name only the tamil people we have large number of excavated site in north india so associated with mahabharata ramayana sites we have then uh, associated with buddhism and jainism padaliputra uh, patna gurukshetra adi kavichetra asinapura so many places uh, even alexander cunningham excavated uh, no sites is having this kind of pottery because the tamil people more literary uh, literary, uh, literary people they were very much uh, um, literacy than uh, north indian people nagasri himself mentioned the north indian people uh, don't have the Uh, knowledge system of uh, learning and the knowledge system of uh, script but in tamil nadu around 6th century bc itself we have uh, the script we have it is scientifically dated you clearly we have the uh, script with uh, 6th century bc now the scientifically proved so at kodumanal we have nearly 1900 portraits we have uh, this kind of uh, names of individuals names of merchants names of uh, the people names of a lady at key lady also we have names of ladies and uh, adagar club also nearly 40 35 sites uh, in tamil nadu we have uh, this pottery with the names uh, even in karnataka we don't have but in andhra we have nagaraja konda and that was the influence of tamil people so the tamils used to have the script uh, around 6th century bc itself but in when compared to north india around 4th century bc only we have the script in north india that is the thing so this is the siglita of that is a made of rome a cup wine cup 
these are the semi precious stones from marikamedu i will pass on because the time is going on so this is a carnelian bead with various uh, designs this is the carnelian um, beads the raw material we have in gujarat as well as in afghanistan area also the carnelian beads this is the adagan kulam it was excavated uh, by state archaeology uh, 15 years back this one again now they are doing adagan kulam now last year also they have done this is the port city only adagan kulam Uh, this is the roof tiles they use then uh, the sang the sang bangles also the conch bangles also they use to have sangarup engal kulam like that they will say in tamil so this is the adagan kulam area we have the square coin the coin with the elephant and some punch, uh, punching marks also are there some symbols uh, as special symbols also there then uh, these are the semi precious stones then we have the legend tamil uh, inscriptions then you see here the ship and the pottery this is a kind of ship uh, the pai maram with uh, and the padagu nudiya the keda water nudiya idala potrukan pa so this is a very the pai mara kappal women uh, watch tower kuda irukku paanga inge mele irukka and mele irukka watch tower one so it's a big ship idu vande adha paathu the admire on and that so on the pottery la varandirukanga these are the uh, influence of uh, roman you see say a kind of nammude idhula pyramids la irukra figure of the roman figure the egypt figure we have this is also egypt uh, a small terracotta figure so these these are the foreign influence so we have you see the king some man is there is uh, one uh, my lady is also standing so this is figure one horse man is also here then some of the foreign so we have the same boat here and another boat you see here another another ship not boat another ship so these are the aragan from recovery the so aragan from antiquities the aragan from is a very important port city in those days of uh, uh, early uh, era early century around 2000 bc itself you have 200 200 years 200 200 years old not bc 200 2000 years this is a musri so excavated by the archaeological kerala archaeological society and the sherian and this is the musri port musri port means that is a patanam presently it is known as patanam so this is the excavated area so many uh, large number of brick uh, structures we have at musri so it was one of the important port city in those days referred to in the sangam literature so this is the brick on par with the aran kulam not aran kulam aran kulam also we have then kiladi and korkai urayur kodumanal uh, not kodumanal kodumanal we do not have this structure uh, this kind of structure uh, korkai we have aran kulam we have and uh, kiladi we have arikamadi we have urayur we have so this is the size of the structure is Uh, more or less similar to this area even in mamalavaram salavangu also we have this kind of structure which is the size of the structure so we have a single boat so when you know that that ferry system so generally the when compared to the eastern coast the eastern sea um, uh, very deep is uh, even uh, when they excavate kaveri pumnu when they they wanted to do underwater uh, excavations it is very difficult to do that because there is a lot of water so very deep on nearly 200 meter 300 meter it goes but in uh, arabian sea uh, the water is very uh, the even the flowing also very less um, and you can see even the style of the uh, sea also so depth is very less when compared so generally the ship used to anchor in the middle of the sea itself so it won't enter into the near to the coast so then they um, um, uh, all the goods will be transported to a single boats some small boats small ferries they use then through the backwater they use all this kind of uh, boat it's a kind of boat uh, recovered from the excavations a single boat single wood boat manufactured in the uh, same uh, kerala wood itself single boat they used to have goods uh, they uh, transport all the goods from the single boat from the ship and the it came to reach to uh, 
port. So this is a kind of boat recovered from the excavations at Musri. So it is a second century BC or um, first century BC or around 2,200 years old boat they used. So this is the boat. So these are the important cities, the mercantile activity cities as well as Purundal, Tardikudi, Pumgar. So these are the say, port cities as well as the inland trade centers. These are the go, uh, antiquities uh, of foreign goods. It, it, it was not ma made from India. So you see, the, these are gold. Now it is not available. Uh, it is already gone to foreign countries. Uh, they sold out. Uh, this is the Karur um, lady and a, a man uh, in a gold uh, pendulum. Then this is the also gold, uh, influence of uh, Egypt influence. Then this is also gold. This is also gold with the chariot. A man, two men uh, uh, sitting on the chariot and uh, horses are there. These are a gold recovered from the Karur area. So the influence of foreign. Hmm. This is integralia of carnal beard. You see some figure are there with a horse figure is there. This is also made from uh, foreign countries. Recovered from Kurkai. Then some uh, the, in the medieval period again. It continues, the process is continues, maritime activities continues till even uh, the um, Pallava period, it continues because they um, uh, minting the coins with the ship symbol. So they used to have uh, trade with the South Asian countries. They had a um, uh, uh, close contact, political contact with the, even China. Around second century BC itself, the Tamil people went to China and some of the South Asian countries. And the Chinese answer mentioned the uh, trade contacts between Tamil Nadu and, uh, and uh, the China area. Um, um, it, and after that, after Pallavas, after the Sangam period, it continues. So even while Institute also mentioned that he, he had a, uh, he sent the ambassador to China and uh, had a smooth uh, maritime activities with the Chinese people because this is a silk route. So they, they had a uh, alliance. Uh, for smooth trade trading. So he sent the uh, ambassador to that country and they sent to their ambassador. That's why Yuan Song came over here and he, he reached to uh, uh, our Arsha um, Empire and he came to Mamalaburam and also to Kanjiburam. So uh, the continuous uh, relationship between um, Chinese and Sri Vijaya to Tamil Nadu and the South Indian countries. So the, it continues, the process continues uh, through mercantile activities, through political activities. So the wider mentioned, mentioned about their uh, political uh, compact also. Uh, the various mercantile deals, they started uh, in the early days, we have Nikama and uh, that Shirini we have. But afterwards, the MoneyGram, the MoneyGram inscriptions we have at Takoba. Southeast Asian country, there is a place called Takoba. The MoneyGram is a village very near to Kavari Pumbatinam. The people of uh, traders uh, went to South Asian country and they made some uh, uh, group of uh, community people like that, Mani Gramam. Um, they settled there, permanently they settled there and they did some, uh, they had some activities, mercantile activities. The Mani Gramatar at uh, Takoba and Ainutruva, the Sayayarita Ainutruva. They went all the size, all directions. Then Ayavole, the Ayavole, Ayapuril or Ayavole. The Nana Desi, Nanga Desi, Pur Nana Desi. Then the embassy they sent to Pallavas, the embassy by, by while inscription mentioned. The Nagastya concept, the Agastya concept is prevalent in uh, South Asian country. Agastya, about Agastya, many sculptures were there and the Agastya concept is there. It went through from uh, Tamil Nadu to South India to uh, South Asian country. Then script similarity we have. I already mentioned that China conduct. We have still, uh, even last year also they, um, the president of China, they came here to he has chosen Mahmalabur particularly because he knew the, uh, that conduct. Because he, their annals um, focus much about our uh, traders, uh, our conduct with the Chinese people. That's why even uh, when Rajendra Chola went to Takaba because of this mercantile activities only. Because the, during that time also, the Chinese wanted to stop uh, Indian merchants. So that's why. Rajendra Chola went there and he cautioned the steel hijacking. And if you give importance to China people, then we will conquer it. 
he just conquered and he lived, uh, left the place to him only and they had a impact they had a, a peaceful treaty and he allowed uh, the sudamani varman that uh, um, vijay tunga varman of sri vijaya because takaba is a very important center so the uh, tamil merchants already settled in that area they were affected by the chinese traders that's why they called they informed to the chola king and immediately rajaraj sent his son uh, to uh, south east asian countries he warned the shivaja king and again shivaja uh, king had a uh, peaceful treaty with him and he wanted to build a uh, pagoda that uh, uh, buddhist chaitya uh, monastery at nagapattinam it is already existed during the time of pallava itself it was there in the nagapattinam area it was there he wanted to uh, rebuild again in that area so rajaraja allowed him allowed him and he made in the laden plates it is mentioned uh, he allowed him and he uh, built a new monastery known as sudamani parma vigarai in the name of the vijayadunga roman uh, his father uh, sudamani varman uh, that is sudamani parma vigara but rajaraja uh, perumballi was also there in the in nagapattinam area that was a very ancient sea port so they had a uh, pact so they had a treaty with them and he allowed merchants he gave all the liberties because of the china uh, wanted to do some uh, trade wanted to stop uh, trade uh, trade of the tamils that's why rajendra went and cautioned them and after it was uh, smoothly it was uh, going on so the navy nagai sri vijaya rajendra chola sudamani vigara everything it is there so our uh, maritime activities continuously uh, was in progress so these are the some of the uh, things from south east asian countries uh, then in uh, thailand we have this tamil brahmi patchets like that then this is perumbadan kal i mentioned already perumbadan kal uh, this is the vaigundha perumal temple we have vaigundha perumal temple you know that it kanjipuram um, some uh, many historical you know the history of pallavas know that you can uh, know this temple also because we have uh, the historical sculptures in and around the um, that circumambulatory in the passage in the uh, pragara walls and uh, around nandivarman second period um, there is a uh, state uh, collapse was there uh, they were they chosen a king nandivarman so in the, in that sculptures we have all the historical references in that one of the panel we have the china Uh, that is the refer to the history of pallavas so in that the ivan song uh, figure is also there in the vaigundha permal temple you see here a man is having an umbrella with a chinese bird and other things so he is the probably it could, he could be the ivan song he visited he himself himself is mentioned in his uh, uh, literature that is known as siuki so he came from tamarupti that is calcutta Uh, through sea and reached mamalapuram and also he mentioned that he crossed the kanjipuram uh, through vessels only through water uh, voyage only so probably the palaru in those days it was a, a very big river and even some ferry system were there so through vessel he went to kanjipuram and he represented in the pallava court and he witnessed so many buddhist vigaras and other things also he has mentioned so probably he could be the uh, yuan swang he visited mamala uh, uh, that is mamala bram as well as kanji bram it was represented in the vaigundha perumal temple it is there still it is there if you go there and you can see that also so uh, some of the pallava uh, inscription also mentioned about their contact between china and uh, they sent their embassy they exchanged their embassies also and we have a large number of uh, tamil inscription at china also uh, this is the temple at uh, konso the konso is very near to uh, and the uh, pacific was in the coastal area this is a coastal town so we have tam uh, destroyed uh, many they destroyed many temples in china this is one kind at konso we have tamil inscriptions at konso also this is uh, uh, tamil inscriptions with uh, i guess script here in the below we have chinese script uh, this is mentioned about some samanda perumal uh, like that this is in tamil characters of 13th century 
uh, this mentioned even uh, the Saka and also it is mentioned or 13th century. Some Sakravarti also it is mentioned. Uh, some king, because of uh, the, um, the king of uh, China, he was not felt well. So that's why uh, for his welfare, uh, the three main Nandraga, the Singhis Khan, like that. I think this is Khan. You see here, Pitre Madam, some year, Sadam, uh, 1232. The year of the inscription is uh, uh, 1232. Means plus uh, 78, you have to add Sitre Madam. Um, Thirimeni, uh, he, he was not felt uh, well. Uh, so, uh, so, so for his welfare, uh, he, the, our Tamil merchants gave some uh, donation to the temple. This is, it is mentioned that um, the, the Kuplai Khan, so that name, uh, the king name was Kuplai Khan. Here it is in a Tamilized form of Kuplai Khan. It is referred to in the inscriptions. This is a mercantile uh, inscription, merchant inscription. Uh, this is the some of the um, branches we have. That is, this is a laden plate. Uh, uh, this underwater plate, I don't want to give. This is a, a seaport, Mamalabram. They used to uh, tie the ferries. Uh, and this is, these are the some of the, they swallowed by the uh, sea. So some of the uh, area we have excavated also submerged well. Uh, they are doing that underwater archaeologists. So these are the some of the structures we have under the sea. Some of the structure we recovered from the excavated. The, even the seashore, the uh, present uh, seashore temple, that is the uh, seashore temple, once it was used as a uh, uh, customs office. Even during the time of Rajaraja, he collected some revenues. There is some inscription of Rajaraja. It mentions the Kadal Malai. They recovered some, uh, because this is the temple has served as a uh, office in those days. They recovered some Sungam tax also. It is referred to in the inscriptions. So merchant, merchant guilds also are there. Mentioned. These are the structures buried underneath. These are the structures. This is the excavated area. So uh, I think I have taken only a little bit. A uh, large number of references are there. I have not taken up much uh, because uh, the, due to time frame. Uh, but it's a very good, uh, interesting uh, topic. Uh, we have to go each and every dynasty or each and every period. Period wise, Sangam period, Palawa period, Tola period, Vijayanagar period, like that. Oh, we have large number of source material um, for uh, writing the history of maritime history. Um, I, uh, I am confining one to only, only to Tamil Nadu. Uh, remaining even Karnataka, we have a large number of uh, inscriptions. Um, is there and uh, Andhra also we have. Um, and North India also we have a large number of uh, inscriptions. But when compared to North India, South India have more references right about our history and other history also. Uh, thank you very much.